All right, do we want to speak out the um All right. Um Danny Gala, do you want to give out the survey results? The poll yeah. results. Yeah, sure. Hi everyone. I'm going to close the poll now. Thanks for participating and welcome. Um okay, it looks like we have a hi with North America, Europe, and Asia visiting. Well, thank you for joining during your evening. Yes. And for end VMware support level, we do have a tie as well with production and premier support. Oh, okay. interesting. Most of our attendees are not using Skyline at yes. the moment. <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm happy about that, but I think we're gonna convince you <laughs> after the session. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, and of course, they have not acted on any recommendations. Most of them. Mm -hmm. Favorite features? Well, we do have one, one, and one for logist insight reports and operational summary dashboard. Okay. And uh, we do have uh, favorite webinar topics and by uh, Barwin tutorials and live demos. So thanks. Good for deal. Your Good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good deal. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. And Kelsey, the floor is yours. All right. Let's do it. And so, with that said, everyone, you know, welcome. I'm Kelsey Lemon. I'm a senior technical marketing manager here at VMware. And joining me today is my colleague, Sunny Nguyen, senior technical marketing engineer. And we want to welcome you to this session on data privacy and security, you know, which is a topic that ranked pretty high in a past customer survey for webinar topics. And so by popular demand, here we are, right? Um, and the topic couldn't be better, right? As data privacy and security has been trending a lot in the news recently, right? So Sonia and I, what we're going to do is we're going to answer some frequently asked questions and maybe some not so frequently asked questions on the topic as it relates to how VMware and Skyline work together to make sure that your data is both private and secure. Um, and of course, you know, no webinar would be complete without our um, senior product marketing manager, Michelle Clopton, and our marketing programs manager, Daniela Quesada. Um, they're gonna be helping us with some Q&A, so make sure that you're using that Q&A option at the bottom of the screen there. And in the spirit of conversation, of course, you know, if you want to share your success story with us, you know, either in chat or if you want to come off, you know, um, mute and you want to share your story, you know, Michelle and Daniela would love to hear from you. As a matter of fact, they've got some really, really cool swag to give away, as you can see here. So keep that in mind um, as you and I and Sonny and everyone here goes through um, today's presentation. And um, and with that said, you know, here's our agenda for today. Um, glad to hear that there's some. Um, new prospects out there, so to speak. And so we're going to give a um, quick overview of the Skyline service, you know, talking about its benefits and what it can do for you. Um, we're going to talk about and give some insight on, you know, how it works and the benefits that it provides, of course, before jumping into the focus of um, today's discussion around data privacy and security. And so we're going to talk about the key differences between the two and how VMware and Skyline work together to protect them both. Um, then we're going to segue into various compliance standards that Skyline supports before, you know, leaving with you with some important resources that you can review in your own time and even share with your own colleagues for that matter. And so with that, you know, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the product and you're interested and you're in that awareness, you want to learn more about it, you know, let's just give an overview of Skyline. I'm sure many of you are asking, what is Skyline? And so with that being said, right, you know, in a nutshell, you know, Skyline was purpose built um, to address a very familiar support scenario that I'm sure you all can relate to. You know, you experience an issue in your environment, you know, you react, right? You know, by opening an SR with VMware and then our tech support team troubleshoots and they work with you to solve that issue. Uh, well, with that being said, right, you know, VMware Skyline, you know, it actually wants to help um, you avoid reacting to support issues, quite frankly, by giving you proactive support, meaning that it can actually help um, you identify and avoid potential issues in your environment before they even happen. And what's really, really great about it, the best part is that it's available at no additional cost with your active production, premier support, um, hyperscaler, and even authorized service provider um, 
support entitlements, as well as Success 360 and Area Universal um, Suite subscriptions. And as you can see here, Skyline supports all the products listed here. And one of the great things about Skyline, if you're not familiar with it, is that it has um, automated detection and proactive remediation, you know, that guidance, right, that actually will help you strengthen your environments. And so with the service, the whole idea is that with it, you can actually avoid um, um, unplanned downtime and you can actually reallocate that time to do more valuable work. And with that being said, right, you know, um, while Skyline's primary focus is proactive and meant to really help you avoid issues, it can actually help you resolve existing issues faster. So say, for example, you know, if you actually had to react, right, you know, to an issue and you open up an SR with us, you know, our tech support engineers can um, use Skyline and view um, your environment specific um, configurations and then they can use basically different analytics, right? Data-driven to speed discovery and ultimately drive those faster resolution times. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the service, the bottom line, quite frankly, is that Skyline um, helps you get proactive so that you can stay productive, right? So instead of constantly being in that firefighting mode and reacting, you know, Skyline actually helps you um, focus your time on high priority um, business initiatives instead. And so in terms of benefits, right, you know, these capabilities that um, Skyline delivers, you know, they're really driving value to customers like yourselves. You know, we're hearing that Skyline helps our customers, again, constantly avoid um, being in that firefighting mode, right? You know, our customers are saying that um, they're reducing that very, very costly um, downtime, which quite frankly is often caused by misconfigurations, right? And with that being said, you know, the increased network reliability that Skyline provides actually translates um, into less time fixing errors, right? So as you can see here from a recent industry report, and thanks, Michelle, for the stats here, um, one hour of downtime, you know, for an enterprise can average anywhere from one to $5 million. And for companies, right, who are at this stage and they're strategically making that decision, right, to take a more proactive approach to support, you know, they're significantly reducing that unplanned downtime. We're talking hundreds of hours here. And with that being said, right, you know, today, you know, for the customers who have adopted Skyline, you know, Skyline has helped over 14,000 customers identify um, 168 million objects in their environment with potential issues. And so, and our customers, um, because of the support technology, that proactive support technology, that Skyline provides, you know, they've proactively resolved more than 73% of those on their own. And again, right, you know, we talk about that proactive side, but, you know, we can't forget that it also has reactive support technology. And so for those times, right, where you need to react to an issue that you didn't act on, you know, Skyline can even support you here as well um, through our log assist feature, which is actually 17 times faster um, than that manual log upload and transfer process. And we've actually done the math. Um, again, thanks, Michelle, for this. You know, it translates into... Um, nearly 100,000 hours saved. And so, and if you've done, right, that traditional log transfer process, right, I'm sure you know um, how slow it is. And so with that being said, right, you know, log assist removes that pain, again, giving you that very valuable time back to do more meaningful work. And so what's happening underneath the hood, right, in terms of Skyline, you know, how does it work to enable all these benefits, right? So you have to do a couple of things, right? You know, you have to install a lightweight um, and configure a compliance known as the collector to your environment. And then once that collector is installed and configured to your endpoints, it actually starts to listen to start collecting product uses data, which is again, a perfect segue into data privacy and security. So we're gonna elaborate more on this, but Ultimately, what happens is based off of the data um, that Skyline is collecting, it actually performs a comprehensive analysis of your environmental detail, right? And then at that point, it starts to act. It starts to give you um, proactive findings and recommendations. Sonny, is there anything you wanted to add here? Because I know that um, this is something that um, you talk to a lot of customers about yourself as well. And so... I do, I do, and and I, I meet with customers, you know, um, individually to discuss not only the um, understanding of Skyline's deployment, and then a lot of the um, questions around security and privacy, which Kelsey's just going to go deep into. With that being said, oh, yeah. we may not answer everything you have, so don't hesitate to go off mute or, or put into the Q and A. Most definitely, most definitely, and so you know, so. I've just talked about it, but I'm a very, very visual guy. So I like to sort of 
give a graphic here. So from a, you know, a high level sort of, you know, diagram point of view, right? You know, the architecture basically looks like this, right? So as you can see on the screen, you know, number one, you've got this cloud services organization that you'll create and a component of that, um, um, cloud service organization. Basically, they're the users there, right? You know, specifically users who have access to the Skylight Advisor service. And again, you know, both the user and the service itself sits within the cloud services organization wrapper, uh, which can include other services like area operations, for example, right? And then with that being said, you know, the collectors that I just talked about earlier, they're installed on your data centers on-prem and you can add, you know, various endpoints um, for the collector to monitor. You know, we just really, really briefly sort of showed all the supported products here. And if you want to see a complete listing of all the supported products, you can go to this KB here. But basically what happens is once the endpoints are, um, connected to the collector, um, you start to get product usage data, and then that product usage data is actually sent to our analysis platform in the cloud, right? And at that point, like I said, you know, the results appear as those proactive findings and recommendations within Skyline Advisor Pro. And so, you know, up until this point, right? So this is a segue that I was talking about, right? You know, you've heard us talk about how Skyline collects and analyzes, you know, product uses data. You know, you've seen the diagram on how the collector integrates with all of our supported endpoints. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, there's a lot of data um, that is being leveraged to, you know, fuel, you know, those proactive insights that Skyline provides you. Um, and we're even using that data to inform, um, our team on actually how to make the service better, right? So obviously, you know, data is king, it's very powerful. And as you all know, right, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, one of my favorite superheroes. Um, but to that end, right, you know, various privacy laws have been passed to regulate, you know, data storage, sharing and disclosure practices, right? And so needless to say, you know, ensuring that um, your data is secure um, is probably number one, quite frankly. And so, so in the course of, you know, conversations, you know, with customers on how VMware and Skyline deal with data privacy and security, you know, Sonny and I throughout the course of our conversation, we've actually found it very, very helpful to define what the two mean, right? You know, I myself, I've been guilty of conflating the two, often using the two terms interchangeably, right? But they're not exactly the same thing. They overlap, but they're not entirely the same thing. And so with that being said, you know, Sonny and I, we thought it would be a good idea to sort of take a moment to define both um, data privacy and security so that we're all on the same page, right? And so in a nutshell, you know, data privacy is really just based on the premise, right? That personally identifiable information, that PII, you know, it belongs to you. And you should be able to determine what, how, when, and to whom that information is being shared and communicated with, right? And with that being said, right, you know, recent, you know, regulatory trends, you know, um, support more individual control, more consent and greater transparency, right? Um, and with that being said, right, you know, on the other side of it, you know, supporting or complementary or Jason or whatever you want to call it, you know, um, while data privacy is really focused on protecting, you know, the individual's right, data security refers to the protection um, against, you know, unauthorized access to the data. And so, Sonny, is there anything else you wanted to add here? Because I know this is something that, you know, we really wanted to make sure that we sort of level set going into this webinar. You are spot on. And, and, and as, as we talk further and further on, we're going to, you know, discuss. More oh, yeah. Aspects. Yeah. Yeah. So, and with that said, you know, perfect segue. Thanks for setting me up, you know. So with those definitions in place, right, you know, let's just talk about data privacy and security in the context of VMware, right, in our Skyline service. And so, um so one of the things that is very, very important to know is that, you know, when you activate Skyline, right, you know, you go through that four-step process, right, you know, you've got your collectors configured and all that it's good stuff. You know, the first thing that you actually need to do or you have to do is you actually have to consent to um, participate in VMware's Enhanced um, Customer Experience Improvement Program, otherwise known as CEIP. And basically what that allows is that it actually allows VMware to collect configuration, you know, feature usage, performance data, you know, the logs that we talked about in the diagram, you know, all that stuff is being delivered in terms of just helping you be more informed about the various um, situations in your environment, but it's also being used to help drive product improvement as well. And one of the questions that we often get is that, you know, well, 
what, what's happening in terms of encryption? And is it encrypted in REST? Is it encrypted in transit? And one of the things that we wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of is that, you know, the data that is collected is transmitted to us, you know, using TLS 1.2 encryption protocols. And the product uses data is sent to our storage platform and it is encrypted at REST. Um, and if a customer is using uh, an SSL inspection proxy, then that proxy determines the encryption method um, that's used to encrypt the product uses data and the support bundles is also um, collected and that's encrypted in transit as well. Um, in terms of like that, um, security piece, right? You know, we're talking about access, you know, um, all the data is tagged with legally identifiable customer information and that access is actually limited um, to VMware employees and support and management and they all must undergo training as well as receive manager approval. And going back to that PII bit that I talked about, that personally identifiable information, right? Um, None of that is being collected, but with that being said, you know, um, customers should not enter, you know, personal data or sensitive data when they're naming, you know, certain systems, you know, you're naming your ESXi host, your virtual machine or your dashboard, you know, your favorite pet name, it may not be something that you want to do, you know, because it's going to be there. And so um, just wanted to make sure that I pointed that out as well. And Sonny, my friend, is there anything additional you want to add here? In yeah, terms just of this, how things. we're building transparency. Yeah. Two things. One thing is the TLS. It's also a AES two fifty six, right? Yep. And then yep. the IP information. Rest assured, we're only interested in the IP addresses, the names of your servers, not not of your client machine, not of your you know personal laptop, that kind of stuff. Because because at, at the end of the day, we're providing you insights on what's going on within your VMware stack, not the you know, individual PII data of, of, of the products that or the hardware that you're using to connect in. Okay. Good point. Good point. Thanks, Adi. And so with that, you know, let's just take a look at some of these frequently asked questions that, you know, Sonny and I have even encountered throughout our interaction with customers, just like yourself, you know, and so again, just like Sonny said, you know, feel free to type your questions in chat or comment, come off mute. But, um, you know, we're going to tackle a couple of these, right? And so one of the questions that we get is, you know, hey, you know, what type of product uses data is collected? And, you know, currently, you know, Skyline, you know, we analyze and um, product uses data and we provide proactive findings for all of our supported products. Um, I believe we've updated that because I know we just recently added on um, Log Insight as well. Um, Sonny, is there anything additional you wanted to add here? But this, we have actually a KB that I'm going to show a little bit later that actually shows the specific types of product uses data, but I wanted to make sure that we identified all the products and we can go further in depth in a second here. Yep, yep. No, no. Um, I, I think you should show the, uh, you know, okay. some of the examples with that being said, and then we'll, I'll, I'll go on a little bit more on if they want okay. to know the detailed version. We'll definitely do that. And so here's an example. Um, as a matter of fact, let me see if I can open up this uh, KB here. Let me see if I can get my mouse to work here. So there's a KB article here, as you can see here. It's 71071. Um, and you can look at this at your own. Um, see if I can get the link to work. There it is. And so as you can see here, all of our supported products, it actually goes through um, whether it's VMware, you know, vSphere, um, all the different types, but let's just take a moment to sort of walk through this, right? So as you can see here, we've got the collection interval times, you've got the different types of properties and the values that it's pulling. So in the case of um, ESXi, it's pulling, you know, the names and the IDs and the power state, overall status. Again, I'm not going to go through all this in minutia, um, this KB here. Um, again, as you can see here in the URL, and we can put this in chat as well, but it actually goes through all the different types of data um, that Skyline is pulling from all of our selected products. Yep. Sonny, now, is there anything you want me to no, focus no, no, no. on I, specifically? Nope, nope. I, I think the fact that you've provided them with the KB is perfect. Keep in mind, this is just a small sample set. If you ever want to know every single attribute of every single product that we support, of every single version that we support, what I would ask you to do is, is reach out to your accounting, right? As long as you have an NDA, active NDA with us, 
um, we can provide you a long list of everything we collect that way. Yeah. If your, you know, InfoSec team wants to know the the details, you can say, well, you know, for this specific version, as we speaking now, here are everything that's being collected. So that way, you know, we are upfront about everything we do, right? So so that's that's one way for for you to have more, um, for to have a, a better feeling that you know what you were yeah. collecting is what we're saying. Therefore, you jump on to help us help you. Very good. Let me see if I can close this out. Okay, here we go. And so with that being said, right, you know, another question that we always get is, you know, are, um, you know, product uses data and support bundles the same? And quite simply, no. Um, product uses data that we collect, you know, we're using that to leverage, um, you know, the proactive support side of the things, right? You know, the data that I talked about, that diagram is actually stored in our storage platform. And again, like I said, it's encrypted at rest, but support bundles are collected and transmitted via log assist as part of that reactive side, right? You know, it's part of that troubleshooting and issue when you've actually opened a support request with us, um, with, you know, in our um, global support services team, you know, they're working with you. And, and again, those support bundles are encrypted in transit to our VMware support systems. Another question that we get is, you know, where are the data centers, Kelsey Sani? You know, where are they living here? You know, and, and you know, where is that information being stored? And so with that being said, you know, um, data is transmitted through a secure backends um, located in the US. You know, data may reside, you know, within VMware maintained data centers or within AWS hosted services, you know, managed by VMware employees. And I just see a question just popped up here um, on the screen, Sonny. It, um, someone's asking about location and access. They want to know Correct. where they are and can I visit them? <laughs> You want so to talk about that? Yeah. Sure. Where they are is 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 it's west coast <laughs> of the uh, yes. US, right? So it's California, Oregon, Seattle. Um, some data is sitting in VMware's data center. Some is sitting in AWS. Unfortunately, you cannot visit the data center. Um, likewise, uh, anything relating to visiting even our own data center, you, you can't do that either. Okay. Just wanted to put that out there and you know um i know that we've got somewhat of an international audience here so this question is appropriate well, right you know so, is so here's here's uh, another question similar uh, this is coming from ian as well as is is there a plan to create local a local lo locations in other country ah. that's in the us we've been asked that a lot some yep. of the areas definitely are um europe Yep. Asia and India, right? So, so we're looking into those, but at the moment, everything is all located in the U.S. Sorry, Kelsey, you were. Oh yeah, no worries, man. I mean, that question comes up a lot, so I'm glad that um you went off and and, and answer that. So we get that a lot. And again, like I said, because of our international audience here, you know, we get a lot of questions on GDPR, right? You know, the um general data policy um, protection regulation thing or whatnot, right? And so yes, of course, you know, VMware is subject to to this, and we comply with GDPR. Um, we've got um privacy policies here that you can see here in the link and we can see it maybe we can get this in chat or maybe even um, get the link out and so that you guys can all look at that and, and just get a sense of it but bottom line is we are GDPR compliant and we comply with all of the data privacy um, um, policies um, in the U.S. as well. Um, Sonny anything here any questions yeah. or I believe in a later slide, you're going to go even deeper into all of that. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, indeed, my friend. Um, and so with that being said, right, you know, another question that we often get is, well, you know, who owns the data? Um, well, because you've consented to um, the CIP, you know, VMware, you know, we actually own and we manage the product specific uses data, right? You know, because again, you know, this information enables us to improve our products and our services. You know, we're using it to help you um, identify and fix the problems and even advise you on um, how to best deploy and use our products, right? And, and, and again, you know, on that reactive side of things, you know, we're using this data to help um, provide enhanced technical support. Um, another question that we get frequently asked is, well, you know, can Skyline, you know, view the workload of my virtual machines? And 
quite simply, no. You know, um, just like Sunny mentioned earlier, you know, we don't necessarily look at all the details of the workload and all the guest operating systems or the virtual machines. So, so no. And Sunny, I'm gonna let you elaborate there. Is if there's anything additional you wanted to add? Um, as Kelsey said, our own the only things that we care about are all the versioning of your VM stack. We do provide insights on not only versioning, but but if you, for example, if you have TAM services, if you have, you know, Success 360, there are additional functionality that's made available where it goes deeper into this is how you should run your best practice of, you know, right. VM snapshots, stuff like that. But but we don't go into the workload itself because there's no value for us to provide you that kind of insight. Right. And Sonny, here's a question that um, I'm going to let you tackle, but, you know, can customers view the collected data? How can they view it? So customers do see the collected data. If you go to the Skyland Advisor Pro menu, you get all the results of what we've collected. As I mentioned earlier on, if you have Success360 Premier or TAMS, there are additional data that is collected that will be shared back to you as well. Some of this are, you know, CSVs, some of these are um, XLS. And then of course, it could be inserted into other applications to massage the data to, to make it more uh, valuable to you. Good deal. Um, another question that we hear quite often is, you know, does VMware have, you know, technical control capabilities, right, you know, used to basically enforce those data retention policies? And um, again, you know, we own and manage product uses data. And um, with that being said, is there anything else you wanted to add here, Sonny, in terms of just data retention? I know we've got a 13-month data retention policy, oh, which right. I'm getting ready to go into in a second here. Correct. So, so, so there, there are two pieces just to let you know. One is, is when you jump onto the service, you can stay onto the service for as long as you like. But when you leave, you have an option to either request um, full deletion or our interval, as as Kelsey mentioned, is thirteen months. Now, there is also a a TAM portion piece, which will be announced very soon. That the extended time frame for that data is a little longer, but that has not been enabled yet. So. I'm not going to talk about it here. And then in terms of some of the other, you know, security, you know, policies that, you know, we conduct here, you know, we often get asked, you know, how often do we, you know, conduct, you know, security updates and pen testing? And um, so I'm going to let you speak to this as well. Sure, sure. So, so we purposely scan our environment on a weekly basis to identify any problem. We also have a third party um, pen testing to make sure that, you know, we are compliant to um, right. our requirements, right? Anything that is potentially, you know, concerning, we address immediately. Anything that, that are um, fixes that, that, that isn't as critical, that lands into the beat within the 30 day time period to upgrade, we tend to upgrade and fix during, um, you know, regular intervals, all right? Right. And then another question we often get is, you know, can customers, you know, see who has access to their portal, you know, the VMware accounts, um, customer accounts, and, um, you know, we don't allow access to, you know, um, authorization logs, you know, we don't even allow, you know, the export, you know, to external products. But with that being said, um, Sonny, is there anything additional you wanted to add here in terms of some insight? Yep. So, so as, as Kelsey mentioned earlier on, when, when he showed the diagram of, you know, um, where Skyline is, where the users are, and then, you know, at the end of the day, we all live within the um, VMware right. CD portal. Right. right. And CSP portal allows us to do a lot of things, right? Among the things is to tie in Active Directory. But on the flip side is, is there is no process within that environment to pull logs off. Now, if there are certain situations, certain scenarios where, where you know, you as a customer need data, you can put an SR in or a support request in, and then we can, you know, deal with that on a one-to-one -one basis. But, but Generically, we, we can't just have, you know, SEIM or anything else tied to it to, to, to find out what's going on. Okay. Uh, let's see what's coming up here. Oh, compliance. You know, we get asked about this a lot. So let's just go ahead and sort of segue into um, standards and compliance. Um, and so 
for those of you who are wondering, you know, Skyline, you know, we've achieved, you know, various levels of compliance. You know, Skyline complies with um, SOC or, you know, system and organizational controls. You know, SOC reporting gives our customers and their auditors, you know, an understanding of how we manage, right, and support security, um, operations, and compliance um, at VMware. I should have said this earlier, but if I didn't, I apologize, but Skyline is SOC 2 compliant. Um, secondly, um, Skyline, we comply with the Cloud Security Alliance, CSA. Um, that's an organization that works to define and raise awareness, right, of best practices for secure cloud computing environments. You know, VMware, we participate, um, I believe it's star level one, and I can show that in a second here, you know, and, um, and there's even a a document that you can download that actually shows our compliance with um, various, you know, cloud control matrices of that CCM. And um, also, you know, Skyline, we also complies, uh, we also comply with, um, what is it, Cyber Essentials, which is a UK um, government-backed framework that actually helps protect organizations from different cyber attacks, right? So um, this Cyber Essentials Plus certification, you know, requires so that you all know um, an accredited third party, again, to go back, like what Sadie said earlier about the pen testing and stuff like that. You know, we they, they do this and they conduct um, external vulnerability testing to really ensure that, you know, the security systems are protected. And again, um, like Sunny said, you know, that assessment is conducted annually. Um, and then finally, right, you know, Skyline, you know, it complies with um, international what is it, organization um, for standardization, ISO, right? You know, that's an independent, non-government, international organization, you know, with membership. And um, I feel like I'm on jeopardy right now. 165 um, national standards, right? Um, and so with that being said, if you really want to get into the minutia of it, as you can see here on the screen, you know, we support ISO. Um, 27001, which is um, around information and security management, 27017, which is really around cloud-specific information and security guidance, and again, um, ISO 27018, which is really around cloud-specific um, standards for protecting, again, that personally identifiable information. I know, Sonny, you've done a lot on CSA, and I'm going to be showing this in a minute, but if there's anything you wanted to add with the additional compliances here. Um, so for the SOC 2 compliance, right, right. For the last few years, we've been SOC 2 type 1 compliance. We finished type 2 and type 3 already. So if you ever want to see the results, reach out to your account team. There is a process where they can request for it and they will provide you the details of that. As Kelsey mentioned earlier on, there is a document within the CSA um, portal that goes really deep in everything that really we Really deep. <laughs> you know, from how right. we're protecting it, how we're storing it, how we're, we're doing it. And, and a lot of times, InfoSec, when they ask you questions before you deploy, a lot of those questions are in the document within the CSA. Good deal. And then so with that, right, you know, we're getting close to the end here. We can open it up for some additional Q&A, but um, just wanted to share some additional resources that you can leverage and we can take a little deep dive on this as well. Uh, you know, so again, you know, we talked about CIP and again, um, what we said earlier, right, is that, you know, we regularly collect, you know, that technical information about your organization's use of our products and associates and, you know, with our license keys. And so there's a page here where you can go to and you can get more information about it. Um, if I click on this link here, um, you can see, you know, all the different um, things that we're doing in terms of this, the overview of the program itself, you know, how we're leveraging configuration and feature uses and performance data and even product logs. You know, there's even some insight even more in terms of the, how this data is being used as well, um, as well as some additional resources. And so I want to make sure that you're all avail, um, aware of that particular resource. Um, and then with that being said, you know, we've talked about the FAQ um, again, and this is really something that we really, really highly recommend that you bookmark because we update it um, quite frequently. You know, Michelle, Sonny and myself, you know, we interact with customers and do a lot of demonstrations and whatnot. And and never we get a question that we see a common thread, you know, we go back and we update this. And so um, the KB article here, again, is something that 
you can go through and you can see um, in terms of some of the frequently asked questions, some general questions. Um, again, more stuff on data privacy and security here. So there is a lot of information here that you can leverage in terms of just knowing what the actual advisor service is doing, but even, you know, questions on the collector itself. Again, I like to call the collector the brains of the service. Um, and so be sure that you're leveraging that. Um, we've already showed the um, data collection examples here, but again, here's a reminder, there's a KB article there. Um, now, in terms of like um, the CSA piece here, so let me just go ahead and do this here. So again, you know, the Cloud Security Alliance at CSA, right? Just for context here, you know, one of the things that I want you to know is that this is a um, world leading organization, right? That's really, really dedicated to defining and raising awareness around best practices, right? To really help um, ensure um, a cloud um, computing environment, right? And so here's some of the insight here. So if I were to click on this link here, hopefully it's working and it does, as you can see here, you can see within the star registry, all of the listings for VMware. And if I remember correctly, if I scroll, smoothly enough here. Um, you can see Skyline and Sunny. Is there anything you wanted me to point out here? Nope, not at all. Um, if we were to click into the view listing, there should be a section at the bottom, like, like you had in your animated GIF, to download yeah. that uh, Excel spreadsheet right there. There it is. Yep. Booyah. And yeah. it's been updated because because I, I just made this available several months ago. Nice. Awesome. And then um, last but not least, you know, we've got the VMware Trust and Security Alliance here. And basically what this does, it basically it just outlines our um, security and development practices, right? You know, our commitment to support as well as our um, um, emphasis on, you know, product reliability. And it's really, again, just to sort of just validate your trust in our products, right? So with that being said, you know, you can go here to this link. Um, and you can get more insight about that. Again, you get an overview of the service, you get um, our pillars of um, assurance, whether it's around reliability, data integrity, security, and our commitment to you as a customers to make sure that the data um, that we're collecting is um, not only private, but also secure. And then, um, with that, right, you know, no webinar would be complete without a call to action. Um, so we hope you found this informative, but with that, we also like to leave you with some additional resources, right? And so for those of you who are not using Skyline, you know, we hope that this will help you adopt on the spot, start using it today. There's a getting started link here. Uh, if you're interested about it, you can also even test drive the service, right? We've got a hands-on lab. You know, we've got the FAQ, we've got blogs, we even got a YouTube channel where you can see all of our how-to and tips and tricks and even our live demos there. Uh, we even have a LinkedIn group. Um, maybe Daniela could put our LinkedIn group in. Yeah, sure, I will in a second. Awesome, awesome. And so, and what's really great about the LinkedIn group, right? You know, we definitely would like to see you join this, so we've got to update this slide, but, What's really, really great about the LinkedIn group, right, is that, you know, you can interact directly with us. You can stay up to date on our latest activities. You know, Sonny's going to be speaking at VMUG. What is it, this month or next month, Sonny? Uh, this month, actually next week. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, you get to see cool things like that. You get to see, you know, where we're going to be speaking in the VMUGs and the VMware Explorers. And so um, make sure that once that link's available that you're joining it so that you can stay up to date. And then last but not least, you know, we've got... um a moderated community. You've got a whole bunch of dedicated and committed technologists out there who are um, sharing best practices and things along those lines. So make sure that you're checking that out as well. And then there's also some additional things here. You know, we've got, um, for those of you who are really, really hardcore technologists out there, you know, we support API. We've even got an automation toolkit out there. And Sonny, I'm going to let you talk about the API toolkit. Sure, sure. So um, a little while back, you know, Skyline um, opened up the API so you can actually get some of the findings off the bat. We find that sometimes for folks who are pretty savvy, 
you're pretty straightforward. For those who are beginning, it might be tough. So this automation toolkit allows you to do that. It then allows you to send it to email. It allows you to send it to ServiceNow, PagerDuty, Jira, you name it. And we keep adding more to it just to showcase examples of how to integrate stuff in. Right. right. Thanks, Sonny. Then for those of you, again, who are... Um, not currently using the service. You know, we've got a Skyline Task Force, right? And that's basically um, an internal team of subject matter experts. And what they do is actually host um, free workshops. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about it, you want to get a customized experience, you know, you can definitely take advantage of the task force. And then last but not least, right? Again, I talked about the technologists. Um, we've got a certification badge and it's a free course. You go to it, you know, you go through a series of tests that you know around installing and configuring and even supporting your um, environments with Skyline. And after you've passed this test, you get a really, really cool badge that you can put on your LinkedIn page and you can share it with us on our LinkedIn group. And um, with that, I think we are done. Um, and we've got a few minutes to spare. So um, Michelle, if there's any questions or any customers who'd like to come off mute and share their experience with Skyline and get some free swag, we can do that as well. Great, yep. I don't see any new questions as of the moment, but we can wait a few seconds here, see if any come in. Hopefully we answered majority of the questions. I know that we won't answer all of them. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. Don't hesitate to reach out to your account team. Um, and we, we can continue the conversation from there. Sounds good. And with that said, we want to thank you for your attendance. And we look forward to seeing you in our webinar next month. Take care, everyone. Thank you all.